We have looked at how to set up nodal analysis equations. We write down uh, Kirchhoff's current law equations at uh, n minus 1 nodes of the circuit and in each term of the equation we use uh, voltages which are referred to the reference node of the circuit and element relationships from the resistors in the circuit. Okay, And also we saw how to put it in matrix form. Okay. for this particular circuit we have got the nodal analysis equation to be times v1, v2, v3, where this is the reference node and these three nodes have v1, v2, v3 with respect to the reference node equals the source vector i1, 0 and i3. Okay, And of course, this can be written as the conductance matrix G times the vector of uh, node voltages V equals the vector of independent sources I. Okay. So, this is the nodal analysis equation set up and of course, we can solve for V by using matrix inversion with which you are all familiar G inverse times I. Basically, this is saying that we have three simultaneous linear equations in three variables v1, v2, v3 and we solve for it. Okay. When we solve for it, we are basically doing matrix inversion. Now, we will uh, briefly look at uh, techniques for matrix inversion later that is only for hand analysis, right? things that you already know. The important part is setting up of the equations. Okay. There are many techniques for matrix inversion and especially for large circuits a lot of work has been done uh, to figure out efficient ways of uh, inverting matrices on the computer. So, the important part for us now is to understand the structure of the G matrix and be able to set up the equations for circuits of any size. Of course, for circuits of small sizes such as uh, ones with uh, maybe uh, 3 or 4 nodes, you should be able to invert the matrix by hand and solve the circuit. Okay. Let us look at the structure of this uh, conductance matrix. First, let us focus on the diagonal elements of the matrix. Okay. What do you see? Let me remind you that the first row is for node 1 and the first column here corresponds to whatever is multiplying V 1. Okay. If you look at the element A11 of the matrix, where I use the standard notation Aj corresponds to ith row and jth column, okay. we have G11 plus G12. Okay. Similarly, if you look at A22, that is second row and second column, we have G 1 2 plus J 2 2 plus J 2 3 
and finally, A 3 3 is G 2 3 plus G 3 3. You will easily notice that the diagonal elements are basically sum of conductances connected to particular nodes. The first row corresponds to node 1 and the diagonal element in that element A 1 1 is basically the total conductance connected to node 1. Okay, So, this is node 1. We have two resistances R 1 1 and R 1 2 connected to it. So, the total conductance would be the conductance of this G 1 1 plus the conductance of that G 1 2. Okay. And similarly, if you look at node 2, there are three resistors connected G 1 2, G 2 3 and G 2 2. So, all of them are summed up and appear as diagonal element in the second row. And finally, node 3 has G 2 3 and G 3 3 connected to it and the sum of that appears over there. Okay. So, the diagonal elements If you look at A i i, that is diagonal element in the i row, then this has the total conductance at node i. Okay. So that should be uh, pretty obvious. Now. If you look at the off diagonal elements, this is element A 1 2. Okay. So, if you look at element A 1 2, what is that? We have node 1 over here and node 2 over there Okay, and we have a resistance R 1 2 connected between them. The conductance of that is G 1 2. So, basically the element A 1 2 of the matrix is nothing but the negative of the conductance connected between node 1 and node 2. Okay. So, you can go through the remaining entries of the matrix and easily verify that that is the case. For instance, the element A 2 3 is the negative of conductance connected between nodes 2 1 3. Okay. And there is a reason for it, uh, which is pretty obvious also. When you write Kirchhoff's uh, current law equation here and look at the term for the current through this resistance R 2 3. What do we have? We are writing currents flowing away from this node. So, currents flowing away from this node through R 2 3 would be V 2 minus V 3 times G 2 3. Okay. So, obviously, we will have V 2 times G 2 3 that appears in the diagonal and then minus V 3 times G 2 3 and this happens for every node. Okay. So, if you look at uh, any off diagonal uh, term, it will have basically negative of the conductance connected to that node Okay, and that is exactly what we have. And also another thing that you observe is that the matrix is symmetric. Clearly, we have uh, minus G 1 2 over here and minus G 1 2 there, minus G 2 3 there and minus G 2 3 and similarly 0 and 0. This 0 is because there is no conductance directly connected between node 1 and 3 node 3. Okay. So, there is 0 conductance connected between them. Now, it is also obvious why it is symmetric because this is element A 1 2 which should have negative of conductance between nodes 1 and 2 and this is element A 2 1 which should have the negative of conductance between node 2 and 1 which is exactly the same as the uh, conductance between nodes 1 and 2. Okay. So, the matrix is symmetric as well. Okay. So, just to summarize the structure of the conductance matrix, firstly, we will have the diagonal terms diagonal terms A i i to be the sum of uh, conductances connected to node i 
right? And it's quite clear why this happens because again we are summing all of the currents flowing out of let's say node two. Now there are three currents here through G one two, through G two two, and through G two three. All of them will have V two in them. The current through G one two is V two minus V one times G one two. Current through V two two is V two minus zero times G two two. And current through G two three is V two minus V three times G two three. So all of them will have V two. So the sum of all conductances connected to a node will appear in the diagonal. And of course the matrix itself is symmetric. And the terms A I J or A J I, which will be equal to each other, corresponds to the negative of conductance connected between nodes i and j okay so this is the structure of the conductance matrix let me also add that for an n node circuit the conductance matrix will be n minus 1 Times n minus one, it's a square matrix. Okay, and also these properties we have written, they are for the specific kind of circuits we have been considering, which consists of only resistances or conductances. And current sources. As we add more elements, we see that some of these properties may be modified. Okay, so we will look at those things later. This structure will be obvious when we consider examples of uh, what happens when we make some changes to the circuit. Okay. So that's the structure of the conductance matrix for a circuit consisting of only resistors and current sources. This will become clearer when I take an example, a circuit, and then modify it in certain ways and uh, see how the conductance matrix changes. Okay.